This is a 1965 Mustang Fastback. This is my own uh, personal project car. I uh, kind of hate getting rid of it, to be honest with you. It, um, I got it for my daughter and I to do a kind of a father-daughter project. And <clears throat> after we got it home, and I've had it for a couple of weeks, she said, Dad, I really think I want a convertible. So, I'm going to sell it. And I'm going to buy a convertible. We're going to do that for a project. So here we go. Give this thing for a quick drive. A little squeaky in here with the uh, gravel road. It'll reveal all the places you'll want to dine them at and all that. But I am uh, holding the camera with one hand, driving with the other. Car drives, steers very easily. Does not have power steering on it right now. Uh, does have power brakes from the factory. Transmission shifts out perfectly. The engine runs great. Uh, it stays cool. I drove it in a bit of traffic the other day. I have an auxiliary fan on this thing that will uh, that you can kick on with a switch. An electric fan, you know, if you end up sitting in traffic, but if you're just cruising around town, it won't overheat. And even in even in traffic, you're uh, you're good. The, the car actually tracks great. I mean, I got one finger on it; it tracks perfectly straight. It's got power brakes, and they are very nice and tight. I mean, you touch the brakes, this thing stops. The reason I'm bummed about this car going is because it's an A-code car and it's got some of my favorite factory features. Uh, power disc, I mean, I'm not disc brakes, I'm sorry they didn't do that back then. Power brakes, power steering from the factory, uh, but needs to be reinstalled. I'm not doing a good job on this video, I'm drinking my Coke instead of talking to you. But, here's what I love about this car, it's my favorite, 1964 and a half. 1965 Mustangs had one color code that they never redid, and it's called H code. I don't know if that's not really one to focus in. Let's see if I can get that to focus in. Wow, camera's not focusing in, but the color code on this is H, and that is a, a blue color. That's the, the dark blue color that they did only, like I said, only in 1965. Um, and that is my favorite color of all the Mustang colors they've ever done. I'll show you under the hood. This is a 351 Windsor. Of course, if you wanted to do an original, uh, you'd have to take it back to 289, four barrel, A code. That's what this car is. It's an A code car. It's an original GT. But the engine that's in it runs great. You can hear it. Doesn't overheat. Runs great. Um, so the color on this car, the exterior of the color, and now I'm feeling like an idiot because I forgot the exact name, but it's a blue, but they, that's the H color code blue that they only did for one year. It's kind of the dark blue, um, like a medium dark blue. And then it also has the blue and white interior from the factory. So apparently somebody thought that it would be a good idea to paint this car red. I think that they're, that's a dumb idea. And I was planning on taking this back to the original factory color, putting the GT wheels on it, put a 289. The only thing that I was going to do, it came from the factory, I believe, with an automatic. I would put a four-speed top loader in it. I had all these plans to do this thing, make it super nice, but we're not going to do it. So the body overall is very straight for a Mustang, you know, for a factory Mustang. Um, we've got some rust in the front of the door there, just a little bit couple of tiny bubbles right there. Of course, this is a car you're going to sand all the way down to bare metal before you redo. Got some paint chips coming off that. And then you've got your skim coat. I don't I do believe that's all skim coat to put a magnet on everything. And I, I think that, you know, if you're going to skim coat a car when you paint it, uh, not fill pieces up with Bondo. 
got a little bit of rust back there in that cor uh, just at the very bottom of that uh, of that corner. Deck lid's in great shape. Back of the car is in great shape. This is a very minimal rust vehicle. It's got a couple of little spots here and there. But mostly what it needs is to be taken down to bare metal. You know, you've got your Bondo Pop here. This is your, your uh, you know, your, your skim coat, which is old from an old paint job somebody did probably back in the 80s. Um, a little pop there. Some cracking here, just a little bit of cracking, and then a little bit of uh, rust pop there. I really think that these things can be done with a couple of small patches. I, I, I don't think that the doors need to be replaced. Uh, hood is in good shape. Oops, let me open that back up. Opens and closes easily. No rust on the hood. I don't think it's going to need any patch panels, from what I can tell, but you can be the judge. Fen inner fender wells look great. Here's your power booster. That's got that's the factory original power brakes. Firewall looks great. We've washed the car a couple of times. The um, heater core is not leaking. And oftentimes, what we do is, you know, you can tell if you wash the car and you get water down in here, it starts leaking all over the floor. You probably got a problem. This one does not have that problem. undercarriage of the car in the front of course right now it's got that 351 Windsor with the long tube headers it's really doesn't fit thankfully they did not beat the inner fender wells to get the engine in what they did is they actually cut the headers welded them flat and put them in to make it fit so that was kind of a Kind of a plus there. You get some undercoating peeling off. I'll make sure that I'm accurately describing this. I'm gonna get around under here. Get some undercoating peeling off here, but no rust. You do have a small patch right there on the floor. It's old. Rocker panels in good shape. real quick let's go ahead and look at the bottoms of the doors like I said I don't think the doors need to be replaced the bottoms of the doors are in great shape no rust on the corners or anything like that the doors actually open and close well need to be realigned when the paint is done and your fender well I mean you've got some old school undercoating under there The thing that I love about this car and the reason I wanted to keep it is this isn't not a, this ain't a C code car, you know, this is an A code car. This is the cars that are gonna go. This is a car that doesn't matter how much money you put in it, you're gonna get it back out if you do good quality work on it. You know, when these cars are done, and especially in this color, get a little bit of that's not rust, that's that old undercoating peeling off. Just wanna mention that. Especially in a desirable color like this from the factory. You, not this red, I'm talking about the blue. You, uh, you do this car right and you see these cars go 40, 50 grand. So you're not gonna get in it. Once again, so you got some old undercoating under there. A small rust pan, uh, patch panel that was done here, probably from some rust a long time ago. Subframe rails look good. You know you got a crappy old exhaust system you want to put a new one under. Is it 8 inch rear end? From the factory. Front fender well. The interior is promising, the but if you were gonna go back to factory original, it'll have to be totally redone because it's a blue original blue and white. This has been done in black. The door panels look good. In fact, they look like they're new. The seat covers are definitely new. I've got the light that goes there in my shop. The dash panel looks great, and it's newer for sure. It was replaced at some point, probably. Dashboard in great shape. An older Mustang replicated radio. The fan does work. The heater fan does work. 
center console, original, factory center console. Two plus two in the back, fold down. seats look great. The seat covers actually look new. Front and back. Of course, uh, I think the carpet needs to be redone. You know, the panels need to be cleaned up. The headliner looks great even. Great shape. I wouldn't replace the headliner. I mean, if, it, like I said, of course, I'm saying that if you're going to keep the interior black and you know, it's got that black pony interior. I mean, we thought that was before I figured out the color on this, the original factory color on this thing, I was thinking we're going to paint it black with the red GT stripe. And I'm going to leave the interior like it is because I love the black interior with the little red accent. Like I said, the door panels look new. It does need new carpet. It's just old carpet. But the dash is in good shape. Dash cluster would be an easy restore. Uh, speedometer works, odometer works, fuel gauge works, temp gauge works. Even the horn? It's weenie, but it's there. You know, all the electrical works right on it, all the turn signals work, lights work, bright light switch works, windows roll up and down easily. All the glass is in great shape, none of it needs to be replaced. Um, although this one does have one wear spot right here, and I'm not sure that you can even see that on the camera. It's very, very minor. It's, that's the only spot it's got right here. It's about the size of my two fingers, and then there's one here, and it's that big. That's the only spot on the windshield that I see. There's no windshield wiper marks on the windshield. All the glass is in great shape. It says, uh, it's the FOMOCO glass on it. Let's see. Yep, that's the factory original glass in it. It's in fantastic shape. You know, things like that tell me that, to a certain extent, this car was taken care of. When the, fact, when the factory original glass is still in the car and it's in good shape, you know, you don't, you rarely see that. You know, that means usually people are, you know, beating the crap out of these things. You know, if you you end up seeing the, you end up seeing all the glass replaced and stuff like that. I, I guess I'm I go over exaggerating when I say beating the crap out of, but I think you understand what I mean. You can tell, obviously, it's been kept. This was kind of a barn find, kind of a garage barn find from, I think it was uh, driven, maybe up until the 70s is what the guy told me. Um, he went to, the guy who owned this before me was in the military, stowed it away while he was in, uh, stationed in Japan for a season, um, came back, pulled it out, you know, had kids, got married, moved on with life, and, you know, now a minivan's the better thing for their family. I really hate to see it go. It's a true A-code car. Really makes me want to keep it um, because of the value in it. Um, you can get a C-code car in the exact same shape, and you're going to put all the exact same amount of money into it. But because this is an A-code, when you go to sell it, you're going to get 25% more just because it's a true GT. So it's got good straight lines on it. This would be a great project for someone. I wish it was me, but I think we're going to do a convertible. And uh, I'm going to hate to see this thing go. One day I'm going to go, I wish I wouldn't have sold that car. What a great project it would have been. And, and the cool thing is, and the reason I got it is because we could drive it while we're fixing it. You could drive it right now. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't, it's not awesome, you know. It's not driving awesome right now, perfect or anything. But it doesn't overheat. The brakes work great. And, you know, it runs down the road. So you could definitely be driving it while you're working on it. These things are awesome.